she's never had the time to actually put something together and have a blather about it. But um, in fact, that I'll, I'll, I'll pass this out just at the end of the talk. But the wee thing inside, they all don't work great. Went to test it last week and fucking half it when they work and didn't use the bits and all that. It was just the usual bit. Just sitting there. Well, a couple of years ago. Aye, oh, amazing okay. when that was it. Oh, aye, aye. Um, so I will put it to test that it works. So I just thought I'd give you a wee uh, talk about it. Just I was looking for me to uh, uh, talk some matter, so I know he's maybe kind of see that as well, so we'll just read it for you. So, ARDA, for those who don't know, Amateur Radio Direction Finding, um, it's effectively orienteering radio fox hunting in a radio sport. So, quite a lot of times we'll do it, or the amateur community will do it, um, as a result of a sport, i.e. How, how quick can we find the, the fox. Um, and it combines a direction finding along with a map and compass skills of orienteering. I've got a wee map here and a compass. You can pass that about if you've ever seen a map and compass before. Uh, yeah, hi. Right. Hi, thank you. Pass that about, Kim. Hey, Barry, I'm on my phone. I can't see you. So, right. no one like that, you've no. So, you'll notice a wee a bit of a difference with an orienteering compass. Because you can hold an oh, off position and still turn the compass in a particular direction, which is quite good for uh, direction finding, for drawing and locating on a map where your signal's coming from. I've seen one of them before. So, <laughs> what do you need? I've never had to use it though. Ah, you don't know how to use it, you've got one. Put a wagon in your pocket. Or put so, what do we need? You need a fox, which is a transmitter, which is generally the thing that's hidden. Um, you need a directional antenna, you need a handheld receiver, which would be two way two meter radio here, you need a map, you need a compass, and you'll need a pair of good trainers. I don't know if you can see this boy here or not, my eyes maybe his nose, but um you think this boy's basically worn the hole in his trainers because he's been running about like a wire for hours. Ross has actually got an ERDF kit in there um, for 80 metres, but it's quite hard to see because of the light here, but it's a loop uh, by Rig Expert, if I'm right, mm -hmm. and you can switch the, the phases, so you can it'll use the vertical antenna on the loop um, for receive, and it'll switch in the loop for the direction to, to identify uh, the way the signal's going. Um, you can get a standalone receiver, which is what this kit is, hopefully now it died in a bit, but it's effectively a single re a wee receiver in there, a pull out te telescopic antenna, and you can buy the, you can make those kits, and you can buy them as kits and all that expensive. Um, some of the, we use a Yagi, some people use a Yagi, or they use um, a loop antenna, but we'll, we'll come on to that in a wee bit. Um, the fox itself can be usually in 80 metres HF or 2 metres. I'm going to send out or pass out a wee Arduino. This a wee, if you don't know what one of those is, it's just like a wee, um, it's a wee developer board and I created a, a PCB that can fit in the top of it. Mind my way you'd uh, it for there. me, mm -hmm. uh, checking it. It's a wee relay and it switches in the tones into here two metre rig so you can program it to send Morse and that will work the timing and it will key up your wee two metre transceiver which will show that working in a wee while. So that's to buy a, a Arduino, I think it costs about a fiver, it's a clone, it's not a new Arduino, it's a cheap one and then the PCB <coughs> kit, you know, the PCB kit. Um, I made a, a rake of PCBs or I bought a, a rake of PCBs <coughs> and I've posted them to about, oh, I think about 25 clubs now. I've posted them out for folk that asked me to make them because I wrote an article in Radcom about it. <coughs> I'm just free of charge, just obviously I wrote them, so I'm just quite happy to post them and they can make the kits. Um, and I made right? a, eh? Aye, I've got some of them. Aye, I've got a bit of money. And I made a, a kind of battery pack for it to fit in, just so it could plug into a wee bio thing for a, a club up in Orkney. If it was a school club up in Orkney, so they could plant it and then they could, they could do some direction finding. So, 
that's quite a wee cheap alternative to create a fox um, because it's basically if we're plugging in a, two, a, a cheap two meter handy and it will generate the, the, the transmitter. So, he never sold up that. <laughs> Did you sold up that, Billy? Yeah. Yeah, I think you yeah. Wait, uh, they, they, they fucking dry joints and iron. <laughs> <laughs> so, aye, so, 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 you don't know what a Yagi is, it's not like some of However, this one's made out of tape measures. So it means you can fold it. I did make one out of steel on that, but it's, it's quite a bit of weight in it. And when you start walking about with the thing, you go, fuck this. <laughs> so, you know, so you just you try and keep the weight down. And this is just a wee tape measure, Yagi. Um, <laughs> and believe it, it works fucking very well. It's 1.21 SWR, so you can transmit weight as well if you want. Um, just a wee, a wee gamma mat showing there, just a bit of wire, just to bring up the pins. <coughs> I'll pass this about. It's actually got a 4 megahertz 10 meter in there, so there's a PCB I designed where it injects 4 megahertz into the C signal, but I'll talk about that later on. But I mean, you could just fucking hold that here. Anyway, the folks can see that in a wee minute. That typical is a Something we're likely to use as a, a directional antenna as a Yagi. They're cheap to make, obviously. It's a bit of plastic can pipe and some tape <laughs> measure and a wee bit of coax. You don't you don't need much for that. On the picture here that you can't really see, there's a built-in receiver kit uh, and you can buy them from America for two meters, but they're about £150, but it's a lightweight receiver with an attenuator in it and it's designed for fox hunting. Another common thing is a look probably just see it here the loop antenna mm -hmm. uh, and this is also another loop um, the loops are good for when you get in close but it, you've got to remember these you, you're going to plant this in the middle of nowhere and you need to try and find it so you're better using the Yagi to try and pin to, pinpoint it down to a rough area and then you can use the, the loop to get up close you can appreciate the wee ammo box here that's a decent size, but if, when they do them in America, the foxes are this size, mm -hmm. right? And they're, they're planted under leaves and all this, right? So that's like a beginner's kit. You build something, ah, yeah, okay, you find that happy days, you know what I mean? But if to do them like in well, America, I suppose we'll get rid of it, probably. Yeah, well, exactly. Aye. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> like the Americans, they'll do it in kind of like New Year's Day. A lot of the clubs in America, and you need to drive about in cars. They find it right, so it's not like they're going to industrial estate, it's planted and they, and they start driving around the area, taking signal strengths, you know, work, working their way through the maps mm -hmm. and, and that's what they actually, that's how they do it. So some of them will stand in the back of pickups with like a 10 element, 2 mm -hmm. metre beam in the back of a pickup and they, they turn it down about. Um, obviously other ones will have a Yagi, so when they're sitting in the car they can turn it, right, so when they're sitting taking the reading they just turn the beam. So loops are handy for when it gets up close, generally, but the, 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 the Yagis are better for covering a, a range. Right, so what type of receivers can we use? Well, obviously this is just a wee, um, it's a Yesu FT65, because it's in the 2 metre band FM, a little VCW transmits, that's, that's ideal. You can't eat, if you use one of these wee bale things, they're shite because they've not got a proper S meter on it. You need one with a proper S meter so that when you're starting to point the next, you, you can actually get a true reading or as, as much as we can. So, um, so a semi decent two meter uh, will do. Um, you can get this, I don't know, you can sort of see here, but it's like a square receiver. Again, with the frequency of the short antenna, it's lightweight, it takes a 9 volt battery. It's not much bigger than that Arduino and you can sit that on your beam and you can walk about so it's really 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 good some of them you can put headphones in um, other ones have got a wee built in speaker for you to, for you to receive um, that one there you can't, you can't really see it's got a channel 2 on it 
So it's for like basically channels on because there's certain frequencies that we use in America. It's a big thing in America, so they'll, they'll go on channel two, and that's a transmission. So you just keep it on. Um, next thing here is attenuators. So I've done a bit of experiment with this. I set this at five watts, right? And it's like, see, trying to locate it, use, even using attenuators, was really difficult. Um, if, I, if, if I had this on a couple of megahertz up, it was still bursting through, right? So I set it at one watt, and if you went a megahertz up on each of them, you couldn't hear anything. So one watt's probably quite effective for you for, for actually doing the exercise. The intent, there's a couple of attenuators that you can get. This is one you can roughly see here. It's basically an Eureka uh, resistors, and you're switching in different resistors for a different value of attenuation. Same with, there's a shorter one here as well, exact same. It's a lightweight, so it plugs in line obviously because you've got your handheld radio, you've got your Yagi. You need something to plug in the middle, so most folk end up just using like an elastic band and putting this metal box with toggle switches on it, on that, and then you can toggle in the attenuation. Other one is the four megahertz attenuator, and then you can see it here. But fucking shite, me. But it's a PCB and it inserts four megahertz. So if that's on one four four five hundred, which I think this is set. At, you go to 148 up or you can go 4, four megahertz below why you how you'd want to use that is that if when you turn there's a resistor when you turn it it inserts the four megahertz so you can actually basically control the signal the receive signal because you're off frequency so you can insert basically you're inserting the original frequency back <coughs> in it so you've got something to attenuate because if you're sitting four megahertz up you turn it it's, 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 it's increasing the 4 megahertz into the attenuator, it's bringing it back down to the actual receive frequency. So you can have that on, if you've only got that on, if you've got that on full basically, and it's still coming through, you know you're pretty close. So it's, it's just a way of, of attenuating the signal by going off frequency. They're very common, but again, it uses a wee 4 megahertz crystal. It took a wee bit funny route, honestly, you actually get it, but it's working fine. Um, and that's what's actually in here. So I've just put it on a uh, in a plastic box. So again, switch the turn it on, and the we just a wee pop turns it and inserts the the basically four megahertz. Uh, you can bypass that by just leaving it off, and you plug that straight into the the ring. Why, why four, boy? <clears throat> because that's the crystal you can get. <laughs> so that's why. That's why. That's why that. Four is, it's an easy multiplier it's for four. Oh, is it harmonics? Aye, so it's it's easy, yeah, it's easy to get. Yeah, okay. Um, and and the, the the components for it are quite easy to get, and also, aye, um, but it's quite good because you know if you, you if you're in one four eight five hundred that's transmitting one four four five hundred, then you when you turn the VFO you can be right up into one four eight, but it's still coming through. Then you know you're pretty close. Remember, this is a decent size, but if it's a wee thing this size, you need a wee bit more. But we'll, we'll try it out. We should be able to try it out later. Again, it's just a wee nine volt battery on the side just to power it. Um, so they're quite they're quite common. Um, you can buy you can buy them pre-made actually uh, in America, but it's just more fun just create a PCB and stick the bits on it, and then you know it works. Um, I've got plenty of APCBs as well. What package do you use for J JLs JCL. It's a uh, jack. Well, I, I created it using Fritzing. Right. Okay. Which is um, quite easy because it's just you can create the physical size of the PCB, add the components in, do a top layer, bottom layer. It's through hole components, so you can add a SMD. Mine's are obviously through hole because I'm not, you know, trying to solder a wee tool hanger and stuff like that. So it's all through hole components, and then you just. You can use the top layer and bottom layer, so they're different colours. So if you've got like an orange connection, it's a top layer. If you, they're all yellow, it's a bottom layer. So you can, so you, you know, if you're if you're wanting the tra uh, tracks to overlap but they'll be connected, you use a top and bottom layer. Mm -hmm. Or you can do when it's just like ground only. You know what I mean? But it's, so there's a couple of different options. Um, the fits thing, I've got that fits thing so far. I think I've actually got on this. Um, 
great wee software for, for doing any PCBs um, and it, it saves it as a GebRA file right, okay. and then you upload that into the, the, the company in Hong Kong and they'll, it's great, they'll just, just go ahead and print it, no issues. Um, it's one of the odd ones where you're getting PCBs done because if you get 20, let's just say it's £22, or if you get 17, if it cost you 12 quid. Right, so you've got to watch yeah, actually what you, how much do you actually need, and uh, but it, but it's, it's it's quite good. I mean that the Hong Kong the postage is something like twelve dollars, and it usually takes about two weeks to come, so it's not bad. It uses the Hong Kong post, you know the one that's linked to Royal Mail, and yeah. um, so it's it's quite good. The VPCBs, I've got one in my QRs. I mean you can see these photos up close. It's just always a shit day with the sun, but in ten years, quite important because. Without it, I mean, I've done a wee bit of experimentation, very difficult without it. So, uh, again, some people just use resistors because it's easy, 16 dB or whatever, they're just switching them in. And again, you're just wanting to reduce that signal because if it's still coming through S9 and you've got that attenuation, then you know you're pretty close to where that's, where that's transmitting. Yeah, we um, found that when we were doing the Fox and Hounds uh, down here. We're using it on the two natural <coughs> receiver on yeah, the ball when, you go, when you go close in, it could get really confusing Aye. unless you actually manage to attenuate the signal down. Then you could start to get closer to it. Aye. But it needs to slow. So Aye, because that's what happens. And even see when that's mm. on f like five watts, and honestly, it swamps it. Yeah. And they put it down to one watt, it's so, so a wee bail fell. Sure, pass it around. Really mm. So, the Fox transmitter is hidden at location. Um, this one here, you just simply turn it on. So, I'll do a wee demo. So, this is on 144500. So, see if you can tell, I don't know, you're fucking with bad plans. So, We'll just, as soon as I turn this on, hopefully. <laughs> so James is saying it's Fox Fox number one. Please, uh, please receive. Right, so with this, I'll pass it around, but basically it's a wee Arduino plugged into a bail thing, running off a dual battery with a power supply, yeah, a switch, as we call it, a switch mode, um, step down voltage regulator in there. The one that I had went in fire was like, oh, there's smoke coming out of that one. So I had to order a new in. So it's a wee bit more expensive, that one, it costs £6 rather than 3 So I'm hoping it lasts a wee bit longer. Um, so it's timed, you, you plug in your Arduino into your computer, you can type what you want to send, how, how what pitch you want you to send the tone at, and how long you want the cycles to be. Um, so I'll just keep doing that. Now, <coughs> I'll pass this about a little bit, you can have a wee. So, you basically plant that, with this one here, I've done it so it's a toggle switch, so you just turn it on, it keys up straight away and then you're no messing about, you don't need to turn any settings on and then you just turn the switch on, you plant that and it'll keep going till the battery runs out. It's a dual, I guess a 1.5 amp of battery, <laughs> there next week it will still be running. Um, again, it's like I just had an adapter. I've got all these dual batteries. I thought, I know, they'll just make it so it's going to runs off a dual battery and it saves any messing about um, for running these wee things. You, I have tried it with a 9 volt battery, like one of them, but it's, I think it just drains it. I think it just drains it too much. And when you don't get enough voltage, it starts going eh, and jams up and all this. So it's, it's not great, so I think the, the dual battery is the best way to go. There's enough ampour in it and the wee, uh, the wee regulator in there is enough. So we've planted our box. We've then got a team area map. This one here is, I've just done still in Novus with Ross. We've got a compass. And then this is, we'll, we'll start then going to work. 
the reason we laminate it is we can use those white board pens and then rub it out and then you can reuse them. That, that, that's the only reason it's laminated. Um, I suppose a one-off event. Now, and as I say, in America, it's like you're driving 20 minutes from one point to another. I've just done a map of the industrial estate in here because it's just just to show you the principle of it. But um, as you can appreciate, it, it could be absolutely miles. So you go into teams, you've got your map, you've got your compass, and you're looking for um, you're look you're looking to for to find the beacon. So I've created a wee gif here, and basically you'll start seeing these lines coming up on the map. So what we do is we take let's just say we're facing north and we draw a line north, we walk along it maybe halfway, and we'll turn our beam about, right? Oh oh, I'm getting a signal in this direction here. Alright? So we'll hold our compass in the north position and then we can turn this bit here. So this stays north, we turn it to find the the or the, the angle that we're receiving the vest on and we draw another line on the board and then what we'll do is we've got to remember it might be strong there but it could be off the back of the beam all right so when so when we, you're drawing a line it's because you're receiving a signal along there it could be behind the beam or front of the beam you're only you're only receiving it in that line so the first one comes on we walk along oh it's down that direction we draw a line, then then what you can do is walk down there, turn the beam, if it's still facing that way then you'll need to attack it for another angle. Because what you're looking to do is get enough lines on the map to try and point to a direction or try and point to an area that the signal's actually coming from. Is so Is that one on a boat? On a boat, I need it on a boat. It's the donuts. So I've kind of talked well, a bit about the importance of ARDF, and we're we'll going in a minute about using it for RFI. But if you're getting RFI in the house, this is the principles, this is why this is quite important to understand and have a wee go at it. Because if you're getting noise to a couple of neighbours up or a couple of streets up, these basic skills are enough to actually identify and track down a noise source. You could be doing these in a car. So you could be going up one street listening in a wee receiver on your, on, your, on your car a wee bit, take a signal reading, go up to another street, take a signal reading, and then what you end up with is a concentrated area that the signal's quite strong, and then you can go in your foot and actually start either with a loop or with one of these jaggies and actually start to try and pinpoint the noise source. The principle's the exact same for this hobby here, this, this sport. Because it's a beacon sending morse, it's not any different from a, a switch mode power supply. It's, as long as the noise source is there and you can hear it, the principles are the exact same. So we've got our map, we walk along, we draw a line, we walk along that line and we, we try and identify the direction that the signal's going. So we then draw another line in that direction because it could be that way and that way off the back of the beam. If we go up this line, we turn about and it's still strong, we're going that way and then we're going along this part of the line and then we're turning it round about. If it starts coming stronger over here, we draw another line and then we walk up that line and then we walk round about and if it's stronger over here, we then draw another line. So the idea is, is you've, you've, you walk, you've covered enough area to, to pinpoint it in a particular path, right? That is, that's the main principle with this. Whether, if you're doing it at home and you're doing that in a car, it's the exact same thing. When you're out walking with one of these, it's the exact same. The, the principle's the same. Is that when you get stoked from the police? Ah, what are you doing, mate? What's that in here, man? What are you up to? Well, the first time that's happened. Well, the first time it's happened to me either. No, I know. I can tell you my encounter. Even when I was working. I'll, I'll tell you my encounter later on. Um, so, once we, once we generate or we get the genuine area that it's coming from, that's when you need to start walking about and use the antennae because you've got it down to an area you know it's here, where is it? Now that, if this was a noise source in the house it's the exact same principles I've, I've done it, I, I was getting wiped out my noise off COVID and I was away in my car and it, you know, 20 minutes up the road waiting to do this signal, just a Google map 20 minutes up the other direction 
and then you start to narrow down to an area that is, well, you know what, I'm 20 dB over 9 here. It's, 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 and you go 15 minutes up the road, and it's still fucking S9, you're like, this is strong. So you start getting an area, and then see if you get an area that you're getting a noise source from. The end, you spend time, like, up on doing all the streets, taking readings. All you're doing is narrowing it down every time you do it. And it's honestly, it's no any different for this hobby. You just walk about, take some readings, walk about more, take more readings until you can, can get it. So, once the general area is narrowed down, the process continues with a 10 year maybe needed in order to sniff out the fox. You, for this particular event here, for using this, you'll need the 10 year to identify where it is because it will still be pretty strong. And, um, and, and the good thing with the 10 years, you know, you've got quite good control on everyone there. So, ARDF Fox represents interference. So, like I said, this wee beacon here at CW, this could represent a switch mode power supply, it could, I can VDSL, whatever noise that you're getting in the house, <laughs> the principle of ARDF is the same. Um, the, the closer you are to the noise source, the higher bands it affects. So even if you've got a wee two meter handy, the closer you are to the noise source, it will start affecting the higher bands, especially if it's, if it's broadband. So 10 meters is quite common. And then the closer you get to it, you start, start showing in six meters then two so it's quite a common trait with most noise sources that you'll, you'll actually see it on two meters when you're, when you're getting close enough and, and, and it's strong enough you obviously need to know all the story especially in this hobby about the direction finding during the war it's the same principle okay they would use a loop maybe on top of a van somebody was transmitting cw it's only for a short period of time so they go to an area trying to identify the signal, right, I'll need to wait the morning now to transmit again. Right, we're back to that area because they're trying to identify when somebody's transmitting from. This, this is the exact same. This is, a, this, this, is, this is the same principle. You're, you're searching for a signal, you're using a directional antenna, you're noting down the area you've been, and you just, you just keep pointing it until you get to a small enough area to identify the noise source. So, seeing this, Hopefully you can see this. But this is a yeah. a real life example. That's horrible, horrible noise for you I have to do it. Day in and day out. This is a yank, it's got a bit of So I stopped, I thought there was a there's a pole over there that has a transformer on it that I thought might be causing it, but for some reason when I point this over here, we're uh, about eighty just a wee dipole scale here. Something. Look at that. VFJ. That's a light noise meter. The MFJ. Some nasties. It's quite good for the. So we gotta keep digging. Oh, I put a light noise space with you in America because you get right with that. So now I'm right around the corner from that last clip, and that uh, transformer thing there. Somewhere in this area, the noise is just stupid high. Absolutely bonkers. I think it was in here. I mean, we're peaking 80. So whether it's a CW here. signal or it's a noise like that, the principles of finding that are the so exact same. You just need to document uh, where you've been, signal strength, and you keep going in the narrow in a, a, a smaller area. It's coming from around here. Could be a grow light, could be a transformer. I don't know yet. But I'm going to employ one other weapon, and that is the tape measure Yagi with the 705. I've done a bit of research. Found that you can set your radio for 135 megahertz, put it on AM if you have the capabilities, and some kind of Yagi, and uh, you can scope it so out. So that was right in the middle. Eight meters. Around, you know, you meant, you know, it was eight meter band that was right in the middle. You start to hear all the noise. It's somewhere in this area. So I'm kind of thinking there's another transformer straight down there. We're gonna check out. But I think we're getting close. So you can't even see the video there, but at that when he starts pointing to the direction, the noise floor is cooler, straight the across the van. But that was affecting him in the house at 80 meters. He's then went out and went, oh, this, this transformer's a bit noisy. He then pulled out a tape measure, yeah, going to 705, and then he's up, he's up with the two meter band or thereabouts. Because the closer he hits these, the higher bands it affects. So you can imagine, it's, red it's a lot easier to walk about with one of them than it is an 80 meter. Yeah, yeah, and it obviously <laughs> right. So that, that's the it's idea, somewhere that's, in this area. that's the principle behind it. So, 
I'll show you this wee um, thing working here. Did you all see this? Aye, see what it's kind of done, right? So, I mean, it's not really overcomplicated, that deal. I mean, it's just obviously it's a battery, it's Arduino, some eight cables going into there, UVR5 here, and it's just a wee uh, down converter, voltage regulator from the 18 volt battery to um, 7.5 volts for the for this and for the Arduino. Um, so that would be on. I don't know why there's a woman talking on this. There's somebody talking on that. Every time I say, I can't remember what I've done, but there's a fucking woman talking on it. I don't know. It's going to be the Chinese menu in it. Now you get that. You... Hello! That's the Chinese spy. That's the guy. There's my hacker version working right now, so. He's talking about your RDA, fuck him. So wait on this coming. But it is quite important you want me a decent S meter because yeah. it, it's, it's just if it's you need a, a decent S meter. That's what I actually bought it for was this. Because I mean needed on two meters, but it's um it's good for this. I can't remember the time as I said you can on the Arduino program you can change the time, change anything what you want to say, you just type it in text because it's Do you have a link on the source code? Aye, I've got it online but I'll send you anyway. You just plug in my USB on this, but just to save a bit of program. I'll put those uh, in the end. Um, there's, a th there's a funny thing you need to do for a slash, I can't remember. It, just, it tells you only anyway, I've got it typed on the actual. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is this is quite strong, right? No matter what's happening, because you're pretty close, <laughs> right? And you're like, so even even when you're even when you're um, when you're out and about, you've got to be mindful that, um, just to say this, you've got to be mindful that if you are pretty close, even if you take the antenna out, it's still going to burst. <laughs> it's, it's like, uh, so I'm in 148, 500, I'll wait on the cyclone again, and I can just turn it. As I said, the 5, um, the 5 watts was just quite strong. I mean, this is, this is a concerning thing. I mean, five watts is waiting everything out. You imagine if you've got like a noise source nearby, and it's it'd be, it'd be quite difficult. And obviously, the stronger it is, it's not always necessarily the easiest is to find it either. Because, um, right, the, the one at mine was like right, 20 dB over 9 and 20 meters, and the off convoy that came out at the time he went, Oh, you're pretty high up here. And I'm like, And he says, Right, he says, That's uh, this could be Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. No bother. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, fucking, what chance have I got then walking about me one of these trying to find it? So that's it up full 148 500. And I can attenuate all the way down so it's no receiving. So that's the whole point with the 4 megahertz attenuating is you can just turn it in ever so slightly. If you turn it all the way down and it's still bursting through, you know, you know you're pretty close. So it's just a way to control that signal strength of the frequency base. That's all it is. It's just a way to control the, the actual uh, the actual frequency. So that that's quite good considering what did it cost me to make? I think it's about eight pounds or something. So that would be for crystal probably. I mean, I, I think I've got most of it as well. I think some of it will will get. But uh, I mean, it does what it's designed to do. Anyway, it's a good wee attenuator for this. Um, I'll see if since it's done a bit, we see some of these voice. Wee bit there's that's a, a G3 it does these designs for A meters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you seen them? Aye. Um there's the wee kind of receiver here. See it's channelized, that's in America. And this is this is fucking horrendous, but they seem to sell quite well. It's a, a, an inductor and a shitty um Medical. There's the kind of um, the, the circuit is in here uh, for the antenna. And again, look, there's just a metal tube. There's all the toggle switches. There's a bit of duct tape on the other hood and the V2 yeah. meter rig. You know, you can see, right, it's lightweight. It's, you know, there's, <laughs> there's, there's nothing in it, like weight wise. Um, they're, they're, cheap, they're cheerful. I'll, I'll, you, can, you can feel the weight, I'll pass this so you can feel the weight as well. There's nothing in it. Um, see for the, the wains or that to get used to, you know, it's, it's good. Um, not just the wains, but if you need to 
I mean, you won't remember that folks start asking questions, but I've done most of the house, so I don't really care anymore. Um, you know, I don't, I just don't even, just don't even noise folk, I'm like, fucking me, you don't get it. So, you know what I mean, because you get to that point where you don't care, you're telling me you're fucking pass that out. But there's nothing in it, wait, why is that put a wee handle on it so it's a bit easy to, to hold, just to hold the, um, the 4 megahertz attenuator on it. Um, as you see a wee bit better now, but there's a, uh, no 4 megahertz crystal in the wee, uh, variable resistor here, yeah, but the attenuator is quite important. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't hear that. I'm still the birds in it. There's a there's a sort of way because the flex like bugger. Aye, with the wind. <laughs> yeah. There's a. I mean, there's focus kind of like the metal telescopic bits, you know, for the two meters. Yeah, yeah these are kind of telescopic elements. Um, these this kit that we've got in there, which is the rig, they're they're quite Ross spent a lot of money and they're quite expensive. Yeah, but. The pr not that the problem is, mate, but I, I just look at that and go, the cost of that is not a lot of money. Everybody, a lot of folk have a two metre handy. They can make a tape measure, you know, it's lightweight, it's only a two metre band, you, it's ideal, you know what I mean? You can make a wee attenuator, no na problem. Mm -hmm. There's a, for people who actually sold them and doing stuff, this is actually an alright idea. It's, it's not complicated, you know, to solder the wee attenuator, it's not complicated to do, to, to, to create this wee thing. I mean, there's no <coughs> that, you know, it's quite, the wee shield, it just plugs on, it's quite, that's why I think a lot of them, a lot of the cops were interested in them, you know, in the kind of school stuff, because they're, they're really, really easy. Yeah. Believe it or not, the programme wrote for that, you can actually turn it on and all that, with no same thing as the repeaters, yeah. you can actually do that, I have no, mine's just basically just a toggle switch on and that, but you can actually, you can set it so that you can turn it on with your radio. You know, a bunch of range, um, which is which, considering what it is, it's, it's quite a good thing. Let's see if you can see these photos over there now. Yeah. And again, the direction part seems a bit complicated, but it's not really. You're just walking in, you're drawing a line in the signal, you're then walking along there, pointing it. You actually want to kind of triangulate, you want to get as much pointing to the, to the noise source as you can. What you need to watch out for with Yaggies is. It'll go both directions, front and back. You'll not get that with your loop. Because there'll be a, a null side on the loop. So that's why folk use loops, because it gives you more a uh, direction of what's happening. So if you start to go <coughs> down into an area, you switch for your yag into a wee loop and start. And I've made a wee hand to loop. In fact, Paul Thompson and Big Duck that was over for Spain, they were, they were using it for a noise source. It was on uh, 2015, no, 2010 and 6 metres. But I what I found at the end was six meters on the wee because it was quite close to the noise source, you could hear it no problems on the six. It was something to do with a I think it was a swimming pool pump or, or something like that it was, it was it was causing the problems. But as long as you've got a noise source there, the principle's the same. I mean this is only a toy, this is only about a CW, all you know, your days listening to a signal. But if it was a if it's a racket on receive, it's the exact same exact same principle. So really that was, that was kind of always what to show you is like, we could probably get a, a dry day on a Sunday and actually have a go at doing it with a wee two metre just out about the industrial estate, plank it, see how well it can work. That's why I've done two maps along with the compasses so we can just draw a line on it and go, aye, you know, we'll just get a couple of these whiteboard markers, just we'll draw a line and go, right, aye, we'll go down there, see if we can 